Yo, what's the story? Is the DJI Pocket 3 better than your phone for photos? It's not as black and white as you might think because some of the photos you can get with the Osmo Pocket 3 are way better than what you can achieve with something like Apple's flagship, really expensive iPhone 15 Pro Max. In this case, I'm using Apple's flagship camera. Its photo quality is amazing, especially in low light. Except the photo you saw was not from the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it was actually from the Osmo Pocket 3. Okay, all right, here's a photograph from the iPhone 15 Pro Max. On YouTube, you can't really tell the difference. On social media, you definitely can tell the difference. However, before you get to the low light stuff and before it all starts falling apart on the Osmo Pocket 3 and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, or indeed any camera phone for that matter, here's a bit more of a, a normal daytime comparison shot. Typical Irish day. No sun, grey, misery. But we're not looking at that, we're looking at this. The big thing here is resolution. There is a huge difference. First off, these have been shot on raw mode on the iPhone 15 Pro and that had to be transferred properly. So you get the 60 meg file and then you get the Osmo Pocket 3's raw file, which is... Yeah, it's definitely not 60 megs. Now, bigger is obviously better. There's more data, there's more information and all of that on the iPhone image. But if we zoom in here, and this is in Lightroom, I'm using the comparison view. Is the difference in resolution and detail really that much of a deal breaker? If you look at the Osmo Pocket 3, and then if you look at the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but raw files, yeah, okay, there is a noticeable difference, but unless you're pixel peeping in this case, is it really that much of a deal breaker? All right, now let's get to the low light stuff. We know the Osmo Pocket 3 is an absolute beast in low light. The low light mode is pretty insane. Fireworks are hard to shoot at the best of times. You're always kind of get the timing right, and that's really important. And you have the long exposures at one second, two seconds, three seconds. This is one of the things where practice does make perfect on any device, and it does need to be steady. Because if your hand is shaking or moving around even so slightly, then your long exposure photograph is going to be all over the place. So it does need a tripod. However, these nighttime firework shots these were all handheld. I did not bring a tripod. We were out with friends and the kids. I, I just brought the Osmo Pocket 3. Now, to be fair, on the iPhone 15 Pro, it also was handheld, and this is what that shot. And, I mean, look, we can take a look at the noise levels and the clarity and the recovery. Every video. It just shuts itself down because it said I've had enough. You should have not have had enough. You should be pressing the subscribe button. But right back to these nighttime photos, these low light firework photos. The big downside here is the Osmo Pocket 3 has this one second exposure. That's all you got. Anything more would be amazing. DJI, I said in the last video, you can firmware that fuck out of this. I know you can. Or maybe I should say, DJI, can you please give us a lovely little update to give us slightly longer exposure times on the DJI Pocket 3? Two seconds would be rather good. Three seconds would be splendid. Five seconds would be absolutely f***ing amazing. Bit much? Yeah, bit much. Again, I go back to the point here that there's not a lot of difference between these two shots, depending on what you are doing. So if it's going on social or somewhere like that or shown to friends and family, nobody is going to really pay that much Ah, it's negligible, the difference. Yes, we like the bigger files and the more data, but if you're looking at the photo, hmm. Let's call it like it is. You do have a little bit more scope in editing if you like to edit your photos with the iPhone 15 Pro. Look, these are ginormous files. You've got a little bit more information in there. You've got more resolution, which gives you more flexibility in post. You know, iPhone 15 Pro is 48 megapixel, but we have the nine megapixel one inch CMOS sensor on the Osmo Pocket 3, which is pretty sweet. But that's not the biggest difference here, uh-uh. The difference here is absolutely huge between the two cameras, especially given the price point between the Osmo Pocket 3 and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, or indeed any half-decent smartphone these days. This is a selfie. It's a rather beautiful looking selfie, don't you agree? This is also another selfie, also equally good looking, but, there is a bit of a difference between the two. Now I know what you're thinking, expensive iPhone 15 Pro is probably the photograph on the left. Nope, 
That's actually the Osmo Pocket 3. The other one is the selfie camera on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, a seriously expensive camera phone. I think you can see there's this fundamental difference between the two because there is no compromise in the camera. The selfie camera, the selfie lens, the whatever you wanna call it on most phones is not as good as the front facing camera or the camera that you predominantly use. I always get the rear and the front confused. There is no compromise in the Osmo Pocket 3. It's just you rotate the lens with the joystick and boom, it's the same lens that takes those other amazing photographs. Pretty, pretty damn big difference. So there is no compromise. Everybody is taking selfies. So the Osmo Pocket 3 100% takes a better selfie. The camera on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, all those selfie cameras are pretty trash. But my friends, there is one huge, I mean, this is a huge, 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 huge difference between the iPhone 15 Pro and indeed any camera phone, any camera phone, doesn't matter the price, and the Osmo Pocket 3. I am talking about the panoramic mode. These are these super wide photos which look really, really good if you're into landscape photography or good street photography. That's kind of encapsulating architecture and scenes. Panoramic photos are the bomb. Panoramic mode on the iPhone 15 Pro is at best really good. But to be honest with you, I hate using because you've got to try and keep the line straight. It's handheld and sometimes you might have to take it two or three times. And to get it really right, it, it's just a little bit slow. However, the Osmo Pocket 3 does it in seconds. The whole thing is automated. You point the camera, you press record, boom, put a countdown on it if it needs to be. That's it. Boom, 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 boom. It, the, how fast it puts these together is insane. And if you want to shoot them in raw, you absolutely can. So you get more highlight recovery, more shadow detail, if that's your thing, if you're into editing photos. That is a huge difference between the Osmo Pocket 3 and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, speaking of huge differences, it's not all rosy in the garden, unfortunately, for the Osmo Pocket 3. Your phone can post to social media in seconds. That picture of the cat, that picture of, yeah, that thing. You can get it up, up there in seconds. The Osmo Pocket 3, you have to transfer the images to your phone, then do any editing if you want, like you might do with the other photos that you take on your phone, and then you gotta upload it. And to do that on the Osmo Pocket 3, it's pretty straightforward. You can download it, the DJI Mimo app, and you can wirelessly transfer that way. And that all works okay, except if you're into photo editing and you want to get the best possible picture, then you cannot wirelessly transfer raw files from the Osmo Pocket 3 to your phone. That's a bummer. On the iPhone 15 Pro and most camera phones, you can edit raw files that you shoot directly within the camera. Now, you can't do it doesn't do it wirelessly. DJI said earlier on, you can firmware the f out of something else. You can firmware the f out of this as well, please. If we can transfer video, why can't we transfer raw photos? Now the workaround is USB-C cable to USB-C cable in most cases, and you can browse the actual Osmo Pocket 3 on your phone and pull off the file that way. It's absolutely painful, awful, and cumbersome to do that. You shouldn't have to carry around a bunch of cables to get the best out of your Osmo Pocket 3. But yeah, so that's a bit of a kick in the you know what. Yep, flagship phones or underneath flagship phones, that mid-level tier, they all take kind of pretty darn good photos. But in a lot of cases, they can be up to three, four, five times the price of the Osmo Pocket 3. To be honest though, the Osmo Pocket 3, it's, it's great to use, but it's not as user friendly, I guess, as just swiping up and pressing the screen to take a picture on the phone. It's close, but phones are just that bit more natural for your average user to take a photo. Now, if you're shooting a video with this and you quickly wanna take a photo, it's straightforward, boom, 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 and you're done. But it's just we're a little bit more conditioned to naturally take photos from a phone. That's just the world we live in, right? But and this is a big butt. And if you're gonna take anything from this video, take this. Is the enhanced quality worth three, four times the price? It's a question that kind of hinges on your specific needs, okay? If social media is your canvas and your phone isn't just up to scratch, then the Osmo Pocket 3 is absolutely a huge contender. My friends, in the end, it's never about the camera. 
It never was. It's about the connection the photo creates, the memories it preserves, and above all else, the story it tells.